I've grown up as a Muslim, so that's going to influence the way that I see the world and the way that I produce work. But I never really explicitly go, this is Islamic art or this work is Muslim or even by a Muslim artist. It's funny, I'm often pigeonholed as that, like this is the type of art that I make. But if you look at the signifiers in my work, if you look at what the work is about and the images, it could be made by anyone. That being said, because of my name and its associations, people are going to see it in a particular way. And if people have particular views about people with names like mine, they're going to see it in a very specific way, regardless of the reality of my actions or beliefs. So I have to work with that and negotiate that. And that's just the milieu that I kind of swim in. I'm Abdul Abdullah. I'm an artist based in Sydney. And I work across painting mainly, but also photography, installation, sculpture and performance. I've been lucky as a professional artist to exhibit uh, all over the world. I think being an artist is the best job in the world. I get to wake up when I want and go to sleep when I want. I talk about the ABCs of self-determination, autonomy, belongingness and competence and I get all of that from what I do. And I don't have a boss, so it's pretty fantastic. There's a lot of uh, discipline and focus required to be an artist and from the outside a lot of people will think that it's just freewheeling and you can kind of do whatever you want and just throw paint at, paint at the canvas or what, however you make your work. But I need to spend so much time researching, developing, producing work. Half of it is admin and if you don't have the focus and if you don't have that discipline and that ability to sit in a space for 12 hours till you work something out, then it's really easy to, to lose that flow and things go away very quickly. I haven't had a day that I wanted to give up being a professional artist, although it's certainly full of frustrations and, and there's, it's always like two steps forward, one steps back. That's just the way that it goes. But I enjoy it so much and it's something that I want to do, so I'm pretty happy with it. There certainly have been challenges of uh, being a Muslim and an artist. And the primary challenge that I face is the imagined perception of what I represent from people who might find a Muslim identity threatening. So from the beginning of my professional practice, as soon as I had a public profile, uh, it's, I get fairly regular nasty emails essentially telling me that I don't belong in the country and that I should go back to where I come from, regardless of the fact that I'm a seventh generation Australian and all of that. It's, this is just some of the nastiness and some of the obstacles and challenges as a Muslim artists in Australia that you have to face that other artists from different backgrounds may not necessarily ever have to touch. When it comes to these very like personal and direct attacks, um, so not thinking structurally or broadly, but thinking about how it affects me, uh, at first I got very upset and very angry about it. So around 2011 when it first started to happen, it was really, really upsetting. But after getting some advice from some mentors, and understanding and articulating and getting to understand the whole situation, I better understood that they weren't talking about me. They don't know my personal actions and beliefs, they're talking about an imagined identity. And so that helps me separate myself from that nasty stuff. But the nasty stuff also, for me, proves the need to have these conversations and to continue participating in these spaces. Uh, my participation is a disruption to that. So as long as I'm there, as long as I'm in the room, I'm going to continue pushing against these things. So that type of nastiness just proves the need for people like me uh, to be in these spaces. I've never felt personally any tension between my religious practice and my creative practice. Um, and I know some people that have, um, and they're negotiating that in themselves, but I've never had to reconcile these identities. For me, it's just kind of one. I've just grown up who I am, doing what I do because of the environment and experiences that I've had. So I don't feel like I'm being put out of place and I don't feel any of my work is particularly contentious in a, uh, like a religious sense. So it doesn't, it doesn't affect me in that way. There are certainly sacrifices that you have to make um, to have an art practice. Uh, especially one that takes as much time as a practice like mine does. And the, the biggest thing is time, like in maintaining, it's gonna sound silly, but like maintaining friendships and relationships and that sort of thing, it's always a negotiation. And it's also sometimes difficult for people on the outside to understand that when you're in the studio just staring at the spot on the wall, you're still working, like it's still part of the process and you, you kind of need to be there. And if you don't put in the time, 
then the work's just not going to come and you're not going to get the same opportunities or you're not going to get paid. So you need to be there. My parents are pretty pious and conservative people. My father was the secretary of the Australian Federation of Islamic Councils in the 90s. It's very much part of our upbringing. But they also had three boys who went to art school and a daughter who owned a boxing gym. So we've challenged them at every at every point that we possibly can. One of the really supportive things about my parents is that they're very open to the idea of curiosity and being challenged and answering those challenges with love and affection. So uh, it's always been a very comfortable place to go back to and to have these conversations. And I know my father who converted to Islam in the early 70s, he has an understanding of a non-Islamic experience and he's very open to discussing things that some other parents who I know might not be open to discussing. So I've been very fortunate in that respect. So I only get love and affection from them regardless of what I do. I, I have to acknowledge uh, a lot of the young Muslim people that I meet, especially from migrant backgrounds, they, if they want to pursue something that's off the beaten path or they want to pursue something that's uh, not necessarily what their parents want in a professional sense, uh, it can be very difficult. And I, I was really lucky with my parents that they're really supportive. But I think there is space for creativity and I think there's, there's all sorts of different benefits from pursuing these things. So even when I was in high school, I was nowhere near the best artist in the class, but those artists have become vets and lawyers and doctors, like, and that creative abstract thinking has all uh, been beneficial to their long-term goals, whether or not it's creative or not. And, and for most of them, that creative practice is still very much part of their lives. So I think it's absolutely worth pursuing, whether or not you want to do it professionally, but to explore and engage the things that you want to explore and to enjoy life and to wake up to do something that you really want to do. And one of the beautiful things about having an art practice is I think you, it's something that you can do and ideally get better at the older you, you get. So I don't want to be as good as artist as I can be until I'm in my 80s or something. Like I just want to keep improving. And because it's such a, like, it's not that much of a physical thing, it's really a cerebral thing. And the, like the hand skills required just take practice. I figure the longer that I live, the more practice that I'll get. It, it can be really difficult looking at a blank canvas. Like I see it as a problem with infinite solutions that I don't know any of them yet to. So that's, a, that's the, the process that I, that I undergo when I, when I start making a work. But to take my mind off it, I just read a lot. I watch a lot of movies, I hang out with friends, go for runs. Uh, it's just the usual sort of social activities to get me outside of this space because I can get really within myself and I can treat my studio a bit like a cave and not leave the place for a long time. So it is nice to remind myself that other places exist and there are other ways to get fulfillment. Advice to a young Muslim person about pursuing a creative practice. I think one of the first things that you want to do is to find a community of like-minded people, whether they're young or old, from within, related culture or not, doesn't matter. It's just to find people who are making work or interested in the same things that you're interested in. And that way you'll, you'll fast track the way that you learn about things. And meeting people of different generations is really fantastic. Finding good mentorship I think is really essential. And learning as much as you can and being really open-minded to new ideas and, and, and really willing to um, exchange ideas and with people that you might not necessarily see eye to eye with. It's an interesting experience, but it's the fastest way to learn.